I admit it, I got a PhD in fabrication. Before you take that out of context, know that I did not get a PhD in falsifying data or faking stuff, but rather I got a PhD in fabricating things like making nanostructures from similar components. And fabrication comes in two different flavors. There are two different steps. There is a mastering step, which is where you make a new nanoscale information in a form from which it can be replicated. And this is equivalent in regular life to a stencil or a stamp where you have the structure that in a way that is designed to spray paint through in the case of a stencil or a silk screen that you can uh, use a squeegee and push ink over the top of or a stamp that you can ink and re, uh, reprint on multiple structures. In the context of nanofabrication, the mastering step is usually done through something like electron beam lithography, which is where you shine an electron beam on the surface of an electron beam sensitive polymer layer called an electron beam resist or an e-beam resist and that generates patterns and those patterns can be washed away with some solvent developer solution and then you can use that pattern either in its topographic uh, in its topographic manner as a stamp literally a stamp but much more commonly it's used to master a photo mask for photolithography Photolithography is a technique that is used for replicating information that was first created using electron beam lithography. And in photolithography, you take this mask and the mask, which is made again by e-beam lithography, by etching some patterns into a resist film, and then you etch away a, an opaque layer. The opaque layer can be a, uh, a metal film and it's all sitting on a glass or more commonly quartz plate or and that quartz plate is what allows the light to pass through so basically all that is to say you have transparent apertures in this uh, metal film on a quartz plate and you shine light through it onto the surface of a silicon wafer and this is for example how microprocessors and memory devices and graphics chips are are made and that master structure has the positions of all of your transistors, your resistors, and so forth uh, in it. And through multiple steps of this replication process, you can generate uh, up to maybe 50 layers to get all of your uh, all of your devices made. And all of this work is done in the university in a clean room, uh, but the much more sophisticated multi-step commercial uh, devices are made in buildings called fabs, which are uh, manufacturing facilities for silicon microelectronic uh, devices. And let's go back and talk a little bit more about the processing. So a photoresist, that is the polymer film into which you etch, into which you project nanoscale images on a silicon wafer can be of one of two types. One is a positive photoresist where the apertures in the mask, that is the openings in the mask, allow light to pass through to impinge upon this layer in the silicon, uh, er, sorry, in the photoresist that's sitting on the silicon, that can be washed away, and thus the image or the openings in the photoresist film on the substrate match the image or the openings in the photo mask that you have made by electron beam lithography and thus mastering. In a fab, this process is done using an intense source called a, uh, well, an intense light source. And in the device itself is called a stepper. And what the stepper does is through some very complicated uh, arrangements of very precisely um, machined lenses, you get, you project the image down to the surface with some uh, reduction optics because you want the mask um, because you have you want a lot of control over the mask you actually make the features a little bit bigger than what you need 
and then you project them down to size using just regular refractive opti optics. Okay, so I was talking about positive photoresist. On the other side, we have negative photoresist, and negative photoresist produces the opposite image from positive photoresist. So light passes through the mask, and then it hardens the resist film in the areas in which it impinges. And that's the difference between positive and negative photoresist. All of these processes are made possible by methods of thin film deposition. And a thin film is a sub-micron thickness film. Actually, uh, if you have eyeglasses, I took them off because I didn't like the way that the light was casting shadows on my face. Um, if you have uh, glasses like this, they have different uh, layers of, um, of optical coatings um, in them, for example, and those are examples of thin films. Okay, so a thin film is often cast by spin coating, which is like taking an LP player, putting some polymer solution on it, and spinning the LP player really, really fast. And that spreads off all this excess in every direction. And what you are left with is a uniform thin film. And that's how the vast majority of photoresist films are applied industrially in a fab. Next, you have a few different methods of, uh, of evaporation-based thin film deposition. So, uh, so over here, you have thermal evaporation where you take your metal source and you heat it up really, really hot. And, uh, and at low enough base pressure, that metal evaporates onto the surface of a substrate. You can also do thermal evaporation using an electron beam. This is called E-beam evaporation, not to be confused with E-beam lithography or E-beam writing as it's sometimes called. E-beam evaporation uses an electron beam to heat up the metal source and then the effect is basically the same. Finally, we have sputter deposition. Sputter deposition is a really versatile technique that you can use to make conformal coatings. You can generate oxides, and ceramic materials, and other types of semiconductor materials in a way that's not possible with either uh, direct resistive thermal evaporation or E-beam evaporation. And those methods can be used collectively to produce films on a, uh, on a surface. A little bit about the equipment needed for these processes. So there's a concept of the mean free path. And the mean free path is the, is the average distance that a particle that's ejected, so an atom that's ejected, say, from a gold source to the target can travel before it collides with a gas molecule. And in the homework, you'll do a little bit with that, uh, with that concept. But basically, you need a high vacuum environment in order to lower the mean free path as much as possible, not only to reduce the, um, the, uh, the temperature you need to evaporate the source, but also to, um, but also to provide as clear as possible, possible a pathway for that atom to strike the stage or the, the substrate that you're trying to coat. And there are a few different ways of doing this. We have uh, cryo pumps, we have diffusion pumps, and we have turbo molecular pumps that are all used in semiconductor thin film deposition processes. And uh, the, the key is that these kinds of pumps can reach base pressures of 10 to the minus six to 10 to the minus 10 tor. 10 to the minus 10 generally isn't needed for vacuum deposition, but it is used in ultra high vacuum based imaging techniques that we'll talk about in uh, chapter 14. Finally, there are a number of ways that the processes we use in electron beam and photolithography are not uh, compatible with some types of materials and we need different ways of patterning those materials. For example, photolithography because it uses these rigid masks and projection um, uh, photo uh, projection basically photography to generate the images 
Um, you, it's really hard to generate images on curved surfaces or flexible materials or biological materials or to pattern biological materials. It generally works well for flat and hard things like microchips. But for other types of nanoengineering applications and chemical surface patterning, you need a suite of tools that are uh, of which soft lithography is one. And soft lithography is uh, a way of making printed and molded structures structures using a master that is derived from a soft polymeric stamp that is often made of silicone rubber or polydimethylsiloxane, also known as PDMS. And you can use that to mold other structures or to print them just as you would a, uh, just as you would a stamp.